So today's session is especially exciting for me to be a part of as I feel it is a unique opportunity to expand how the various users interact with both platforms of the portal and iTrack Dynamics. My name is Malik Borhat. I am the manager of uh, product development and innovation. I've been working in a development capacity for about 25 years. The last 15 years, though, I've been focused mainly on Microsoft Dynamics and I've been with iTrack for around 10 years. So this is a level 100 demonstration. So it's an overview of the team's integration with iTrack and Dynamics. And we will start with our session. Um, so Microsoft Teams use has exploded, especially since um, COVID-19. Um, so at the beginning of last of July, it was about 13 million. And now it's skyrocketed up to about 75 million. Um, so we'll start with a demo of uh, iTrack and Teams in action. So what I'm going to show you, what I've set up here is an iTrack HSC team. And so this is just an, an example of what you could do. So you could think of what's best suited for your organization. You could have multiple teams, with a few channels within each. Uh, I just kind of grouped a whole bunch of different type of channels into one team. So we're going to start off with process flows. So process flows or forms um, is just one channel with, uh, sorry, one tab within the channel that I've added. And you kind of saw a glimpse of this before if you were in our um, first keynote session, where now this is our portal view that you can have all your, all the views that are in here that you would normally see in the portal. Um, so you can do all the things you normally do. And if you click on the form, to open it, it's going to open it in your browser. So you can open the form, you can still interact with it the way you normally would in the browser. This hasn't changed at all. And you'll notice I wasn't prompted to sign in um, because now I track as we heard in the other session supports a single sign on. So I can interact with it the way I normally do. I can save it and move it to advance it to the next statuses. Uh, but initially I'm starting within my team. So in the next coming weeks here, we could also add our uh, corrective actions and activities. So we could have that here as well, which is quite exciting because uh, we could support different views with that as well. So the next channel I've defined is managers and supervisors. And you notice that one is bolded. And if you're familiar with Teams, you'll know, you know that when it's bolded, it usually means that there's something there for my attention. So I'm going to click on that, which will take away the bold. And the first thing you'll notice is that, of course, I land on my post. And posts are ways that we communicate with one another um, in um, a conversation. And what I have in here is an approval. So this has been an approval, but that's been generated by a flow, which we're going to dive deeper in tomorrow during our flow session. But this approval has been generated through an incident. Um, it's been identified as a high risk, which is why the flow generated uh, to the manager and supervisor channel. And it wants me to either approve or reject. So first I would click on the link which will open again the form in the browser for me to review so that I could see what uh, has triggered this to be a high risk incident. It's in an analysis status. And then I could come back here and I could say, I approve this and enter my comments. Um, please proceed with the investigation and I could say submit. So generally my flow then would perhaps do another trigger. Maybe I would send an email to an individual that would complete that investigation. <coughs> um, but now, or, and it would update the comment in the, the form itself. The, so that's one way we could communicate. We, so we could start communicating with each other right here in um, teams regarding this incident. 
So the main thing I want to point out here in managers and supervisors is this is a great place to start combining everything that the manager and supervisors need to manage in one place. So everything that they touch. So we have uh, process flow. So yes, I had them up here in their own channel, but I can have them here as well for my managers. Um, Power BI. So that's their reporting mechanism that they're using. So everything that we're gathering, all the information that we are pulling from iTrack, our real-time data, they don't need to go elsewhere to look at, um, at their reports. They can stay right within the teams. And I'm just going to go to the, the one page because it's kind of a nice page to take a look at. Uh, they can do that right within their team's channel. They don't have to go elsewhere. They can stay right in Teams. So now they're looking at the reporting in real time. Um, and we have our forms, so I can navigate there. Uh, my screen is shrunk a little bit here. I have a quite a wide, wide monitor, but I have more items here as well. So we talked, uh, if you're in the other sessions you heard earlier that we can combine dynamics items as well. So we're gonna take a look at those, but I just wanna jump back to post real quickly and talk about some more communication. So yes, I had a flow generate items, but what if I want one of the other managers to take a look at a specific form with me? I need their input on something. This little box here is a, an iTrack, 65, iTrack 365 um, add-in that you can add and I can search for a form. And I can select it. And I can say, at Malik, please review uh, this incident. Ride input. So now Malik is part of this management group. So this would appear um, as black. It would be bolded for him. Now, this is a card. Um, and now he can open the portal. He has two options or open the form and portal. So if he clicks on this, just like we did before uh, with the link, it's just going to open that incident right into the portal. So he can review that. He, we can have a conversation back and forth. We can get others involved in that conversation as well. And um, we can continue just to, to build on that investigation. So some other things that um, I want to point out here is that typically our managers and supervisors are in the portal. That's where they manage everything and in Power BI as well, but we don't teach them dynamics. Dynamics can be quite complex for navigation and quite complex for how to manage records, but they're the ones that know when an, an employee's title has changed or the business unit has changed and um, wouldn't it be great if they could just go in and quickly update the record? Well, they can. They can because it's quite simple to do within Teams. We can just have the employee entity. Um, I should mention also that um, when we're in uh, Teams and we've related this entity, that dynamic security is respected. So they're seeing the records that they have permission to see. So I can simply uh, open the employee record. So Bob is now a lead operator. So I'm gonna update that. He's actually changed business unit. So I'm gonna just look that up and um, he's now on rig one. And um, all I need to do is manager, save and close that record. I didn't need to know how to navigate within Dynamics. Um, log into Dynamics or anything like that. I could do everything directly from Teams. So it's very simple to instruct our managers and supervisors how to do something that is a Dynamics function in Teams. They don't even realize they're, they're actually doing a Dynamics function. So other areas that we might want them to um, manage our facilities, um, an example, edit a facility or add a facility, uh, for example, so we're just going to navigate to facilities here and I'm just going to select new. Just like the portal, they're used to that red asterisk being requ required. Just gonna... There 
There we go. I got my required fields. If they had other information that they knew, they could add that as well. We'll just add that record. Other things that they might um, be managing, meeting agendas that's used with our uh, meeting control. They could define meeting agendas for their facility. Uh, accounts, something that generally, if you don't enable the add account ability that any user could then use or a majority of users could use in the portal, you could now have your managers and supervisors add that device pins, um, which they could then look up for the employees when they forget them and they need to re-log into the app or instead of having your administrators manage that, your managers and supervisors could manage that for the employees. So a lot of options that we can open up to our managers and supervisors directly from the Teams page, which I think is uh, really powerful. Now I'm gonna just move on to competency and training. So have a channel for a very specific role. So everything we need could be right here. Um, so we have training tasks, uh, something that in the back end, the administrator of competency and training would be looking at um, if there's something they need to modify, uh, they could come right in here and look at that. The training records itself, they could come in here and manage these as well. Right, so just that we also have other areas such as the competency records. This is something that um, from a back end perspective as an administrator, you definitely are reviewing um, if there's a question on a record, you could come back here, take a look at it, open the record, um, take, review anything that you needed to review. And one thing that's quite interesting is the competency and training administrator manages very specific teams. They don't need to manage all the teams. They don't need to see every team. But if they have a very specific team, instead of having all of competencies here, like we see both views here, we can embed the entity itself. So the employee reporting team here when I navigate to it, I don't see the view. I see the employee reporting team itself. So I need to update this. I need to remove COSM. And I need to add Darren. So I can quickly and easily start managing the items I need to do without logging into Dynamics and doing them from the Teams interface, which I am in on my day-to-day -day activities um, to begin with. Next, I just want to jump into the administrator. So we could have um, different types of administrators set up. So this is just a general administrator uh, who perhaps manages the different um, form types and uh, the area of form types. So if I jump right into form types here, and we're gonna open a very a specific form type, we're gonna open up the incident form type. This is um, what we're navigating here. For those of you who aren't on the new interface, this is what the new interface looks like. Uh, so it's very clean. It's, um, it's very easy to navigate. It's very different than what you're used to. Uh, I quite like it. I, I find it um, an, a nice change. Like I said, it's, it's very clean. It's very obvious where everything is for you. Uh, so you see here, I can, I can build my form type. I can make changes to my form type directly in Teams without a need to go into Dynamics. Um, so I'm just gonna go over to Forms, something that our 
forms administrator will be in quite a bit from the back end. I'm going to select a form here to open. So we can see all our information. It's in here. Now in the new interface, this is a little bit different here. So our form fields are no longer, you know, you don't have to scroll all the way to the bottom to see them. They're in their own tab here, which is quite nice. So I only have a few forms here, but I can still do a search. And it'll narrow down the fields for me. My related entities, so if I want to look at form injuries, there it is. So I can still navigate, take a look at um, the form from the back end. So I can do an investigation if we're um, looking into the form and seeing what an issue was or what happened to a form from a back end perspective. Form business units, that's also something our administrators would be managing for us. Just, you might refer to these as locations. Uh, this is also something I should, man uh, should mention. So I had kept these named as what we named them, but if I right click here, you notice that we can rename these. So you could label these whatever you like. This is our naming convention, um, but you can name them what, whatever the name suits for you. So I could select, let's say, Rig 2. And I could quickly update that. And we could just save and close. And now when we were in competency and training, we had a very specific team that the competency training administrator would manage, where here the administrator would uh, manage many teams. So here I associated the view of teams so that um, they would be able to manage more than one team. They would be able to see all the teams. Okay, we have many views. I could select the HSC. HSC team, for example, and we could add there as well. So again, very different interface for adding, searching and adding users. And uh, the older version, very nice. And then one, uh, we're going to go down to employees. Something also, like we looked at this, this in managers, I just wanted to show you a nice new addition with the unified interface that um, I quite like. So let's say we select Darren here. And I realize, oh, you know what, Darren's good. I need to, to update a different employee. And you can do this within any record. There's this little pop out. You might remember in the old unified interface, you had the up down arrows and you could navigate up and down. It only worked so well, but now you have this little pop out. Look at this. You can just slide up and down and see different records. So I don't need to update Darren. I need to actually update Michelle. And it just navigates me there and I just close it. So it pops back out and then I can update Michelle's records. I can just save that. That's one of my new favorite features. So even when you're in um, a form type, so when you have to update a section, and let's say you have 20 different sections, and you go into a section and you realize you're in the incorrect section, you can hop to another section. I think it's a, a brilliant new feature. So I'm really quite pleased with that. Um, but overall, I think the the further I got went down this path of how can I make this work for my clients and what can I do and what are the different things that I could add, and I started to go through the path of what kind of roles do our clients have from managers and supervisors um, to just having our forms in here. And eventually, as I mentioned, we'll have our activities up here as well. That's great. 
but we also have managers and supervisors who would touch more items. They're going to have their Power BI reports. Or they would have the ability to touch employees. Um, we're going to have different types of administrators, competency and training. Um, we're going to have form administrators. The more excited I got, just the possibilities I think are endless. And I'm sure you have already thought of many different use cases for it that um, we haven't thought of. So I'm really excited about the possibilities and can't wait to hear what you think about it. So I'm just going to hop back into our presentation here. So just to recap, um, Diane showed you that you can now embed iTrack forms and corrective actions as tabs inside your teams. Um, when you open up a record, it still opens up in the same UI that your users use today. Um, we also have a new iTrack Teams app that allows you to send Teams cards with some information about your iTrack forms. It also has a search capability, so you can search for it. Managers can now complete approvals directly from Teams rather than having to log into the iTrack portal. Um, you can also post notifications inside your Teams channels. So coming soon, by the end of the summer, we'll add the ability to really add any area from the iTrack portal into Teams. So you'll be able to have your activities, your forms, your training. So for certain users, certain roles, you'll be able to replace the portal with just having a Teams channel or a team. A, a team. Um, so I guess we move on to the questions, if anyone has any. So I believe uh, Martin had a question. Uh, he was asking if this would be more useful for portal users than mobile users. He is picturing uh, all of their mobile users who have an iTrack app downloaded on their phone. Will they also have to download the Teams app on their phone to make use of the Teams features? Or are the mobile users able to access via Teams iTrack content? Uh, for mobile users, they'll have to use the Microsoft Teams app. But it really depends on the users. If the users are more used to Teams, then they might want to use the Teams app if they're a lot more used to the, it really depends on what they're doing as well. So the mobile app is really good for capturing the data. And then Teams would be more maybe for the managers to manage the data after it's been captured and inputted into iTrack. So I can see uh, field users or mobile users kind of using both depending on what their role is. Yeah, I'm gonna let Darren here. So I think Martin's also asking about, um, you know, how does this look like from a, maybe a licensing perspective. So Martin, uh, just, just a quick thing too, there are licensing implications with the Teams integration with iTrack. So um, if, you're, if you just have mobile only users, um, there are other licenses you would need to get uh, to be able to use um, iTrack integrated with Teams. So we ca I, can, I can have that discussion with you uh, later to, to figure that out um, if you want. Yeah, the other thing I might just chime in, it's Trevor here um, on this front, is, is just to be ultimately really clear, our mobile app isn't going anywhere. Like our mobile app is there to collect data and that's not that interface and that ability to do that quickly. Yes, there's a Teams app and, you know, maybe you can get to subset of functionality and like you say, you know, Darren says there's some complexity, but, um, you know, uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that because we've built I track into Teams that people would say, oh, we're not going to use a mobile app anymore. We're just going to do it through Teams on mobile to get access to iTrack, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and the iTrack portal isn't going away anywhere anytime soon either. We'll allow you to embed parts of the portal into Teams, but the main iTrack portal will always be around. Ashley Gibbs has made a comment. She said, iTrack does not render well as a web application on a mobile. Do we have any uh, feedback or response on that? So the iTrack portal, um, the iTrack portal is really meant for, I guess, a web browser, desktop based, whereas for mobile, we have our mobile app. Yeah, we, Ashley, we agree. <laughs> we. Uh, we, you know, um, the, 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 the web as a web application, the portal is really 
you can do it that way and you can get in that way, but it's not really been our intent. So yeah, it's probably clunky. We've never really put effort into it because we've always seen that people would do it from a mobile aspect. So, uh, uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Ashley, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah, um, thanks for the question. Also, just to add, we're also planning some new mobile apps. So right today, the mobile app doesn't do everything that the portal does, but we're hoping with the new mobile app, the features will be uh, will be kind of in parallel. So you're able to do everything you can do from the portal, you'll be able to do from mobile and kind of vice versa. Do we have any other questions? Comments? Y yay approvals. <laughs> so I have posted um, the schedule, uh, the uh, the link here in the chat window. If you'd like to go and look at uh, so many uh, th the further conference uh, sessions or any uh, what will be coming up next. Um, there is another, there is an HSC round table um, that will be uh, starting at 2.30 here, Sharp. As you can see, here is the schedule right here, yeah. So we encourage you to attend as many sessions as you can because we have a lot of good, great content here. Yeah, and we got the data transfer tool. Is that one also following, I think, at the same time here? So, uh, cool. All right, well, thank you so much all for attending. We really appreciate your time. Great job.